The night raced on, mirroring our journey away from Kensington Avenue. A radio played softly in the background, introducing me to the melodic strains of Hotel California for the first time. Its haunting lyrics resonated within me, perhaps stirring a desire for an even greater high. It was difficult to fathom that I had escaped the clutches of Kensington. With 47 bags of fentanyl still in my possession and approximately 13 more hours until our arrival in Florida, I was immersed in the world of fentanyl. My body had become a reservoir of the potent substance, capable of sedating even the mightiest of creatures. Yet, I was a slave to addiction, a junkie who had resorted to smoking discarded cigarettes from the grimy floors of Kensington. Now, however, I found myself seated in a car on a path that seemed to lead to a semblance of heaven. As the car moved forward, my mind began to wander back to a time when fentanyl hadn't consumed my every thought. Memories of a life filled with simple pleasures flooded my consciousness. I recalled the blissful days spent at the beach, basking in the warmth of the sun, and taking leisurely strolls or jogging, watching the vibrant hues of the evening sky as the sun gracefully descended. My mother's voice echoed in my mind, and a deep ache for her presence surged within me. I longed for her warm embrace, her tender kisses, and the assurance of her unwavering love. My heart yearned for that affection, and I found solace in gazing at the dark expanse of the sky, as the car carried me farther and farther away from my personal hell known as Kensington. Suddenly, Romero interrupted my reverie, inquiring if I could take over driving duties. A flicker of confidence ignited within me as I responded. Yeah, I can drive. It's been a while, but I can manage. Just as I spoke those words, Mr. Roman stirred from his slumber, announcing his presence and asserting his authority. Nope, I'll drive. I slept well, he declared. He suggested we stop at the next rest area to grab a bite to eat, preparing ourselves for the imminent dawn and the promise of a beautiful day ahead. With a few more hours left until we reached Florida, we pressed on, propelled by a mix of anticipation and apprehension. Once again, Mr. Roman took the wheel, and this time, an overwhelming curiosity compelled me to inquire about his motivations for helping me escape. And so, he began to share his own story. As he drove, his gaze focused ahead, he revealed that he, too, had experienced homelessness and the loss of everything in his life. A deep empathy resonated within me as he continued, confessing that he had once been incarcerated for attempted second-degree murder. The sincerity in his eyes left no room for doubt. Mr. Roman's voice never wavered as he recounted his journey. After serving my sentence,